Hey everyone, my laser cutter arrived. It's still in the box. Big wooden pallet box. Uh, but I wanted to give you a bit of a, a scale difference before I started unpacking it. So let's have a look at the size of it. Before we go anywhere, just a bit of reference, here's my K40. Which is uh, on the stand, I can't walk back any further. You kind of see how big that is, here's a, a MacBook Air. So it gives you a kind of sense of the scale of the K40. Here's my new laser cutter. Let's just uh, go around it and have a look at how big this is. I'm going to have to pull this apart and somehow fit this laser cutter inside my garage. I have to pull the, uh, the K40 bench apart and this is where the laser cutter is going to sit. Wow, I'm really not looking forward to this. <laughs> it's the hottest day we've had in Melbourne for, uh, I don't know, eight months or so and it's the worst possible way to do this, but I can't leave it out in the sun. So let's get cracking. Okay, I don't know how I'm gonna get this out. I don't even know what you can see. It's really glary. It is huge. It is the whole size of this box. It's facing that way. I have to somehow get it out. It's on wheels, which is great. I'm not even sure if you can see the really glare. There's wheels. But I just don't know how I'm going to get it out. Or where I'm going to put it in here. I'm screwed. I'm absolutely screwed. How much fun is this? Oh, by the way, it's really hot. There's the next panel off. That's the back of the unit. So, just to say that, compared to that. It's not fair because it's really close to the K40. Looks like the K40 is massive. K40 is tiny. Crazy. Okay, it's in. Now you can really see how big it is <laughs> compared to the K40. This little K40. It is this thing. Wowza. I'm surprised they can both fit, actually. I wonder if I can hook them both up. Nah, I've only got one set of water cooling and I've only got one exhaust, so I don't really want to have them both running. It is a beast, though. I'll pull it apart later. Right now, I need to tear myself down. Okay, I'm going to attempt to pull the wrapping off. Okay, this is still so hot. The blazing sun. I might have hurt my back lifting it off. Oh, that's got an electric shock. Wonder why. There's a nice little sign, something. So we lift it up. Whoa. I can fit my whole K40 inside there. Nice. Wow, rubbish, I don't know where I'm going to put the rubbish, I'm feeling a bit sore, it's the need one no, nice, wow, much better than that, air assist, excellent, oh, and there's a laser guide there to show where the cut's going to happen, it's a micro switch to stop the laser when it's opened. Wow. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I found the exhaust tube. Wow, that is massive. It's a little bit bigger than the one I've got right now. I might need a bigger exhaust fan. It's like worms. Big worms. Okay. Let's collect any rubbish residue. Yeah, I don't know how how you clean this. Guess I'll look at it at some point.
Okay, well, lots of power switches, standby switch, red light switch, open cover, and then a hole. Hang on, yeah, we'll get closer later. Look it up later. I'm not even going to pull the rest of this apart right now. I, uh, I'm not feeling up to it. It's too hot in here. Exciting day. Alan is going to come down sometime early next week to look over all the electronics to make sure it's all fine before I plug it in. There is no way I'm plugging it in without checking first. I have to somehow work out where the water cooler is going to go because the water chiller in this case is sitting on this stand but I can't do that. It's going to have to sit by itself somewhere so this might have to go here. Yeah, I don't know. I've never looked at the back properly. Okay, water intake and outtake is on this side, just down here. So the water chiller is going to sit on this side somewhere. Ready for this one? The guide rail and the transmission part of Limerick weekly maintenance time. Limerick? That'd be a bad translation. Anyway, it's my new laser cutter! Let's have a look at what's inside these boxes that also came with the laser cutter. Wow. <laughs> so this is the exhaust fan it comes with. Now uh, this is one mean piece of uh, exhaust. I'm not even going to take it out. I'm not going to use it. You can see there. It says it's a 220 volt, 50 hertz, 250 watt. It's 5 kilos. Yep, it's about right. Yeah, I'm not going to be using that. Okay, pass. Like manuals and stuff. Okay, a bag of manuals, the typical stuff that comes with these laser cutters, printed manuals, and a disc that I'm sure I'm not going to use. Okay, I've got, some, uh, I've got some rubber tubing for, I don't know if that's air or water, it's pretty thick. Power cable, non-Australian. That's what I figured. So okay, we've got some clamps for the air extraction that I won't be using. A screwdriver. It's quite an ugly screwdriver. USB cable, A to B. Wow, it looks like a ground cable. Okay, I'm turning this thing on without getting the electrical work checked. Allen keys! Excellent! Never have enough Allen keys. Some electrical tape. Some one package silicon adhesive sealant. Oh, nice. Could use that for my other water chilling episode. There are some more air hose clamps, small ones. Not use those. There is a of water pump. Yep, okay, it's a water pump, which I will not be using because I've got my water chiller. Interesting that they think that that's going to be good enough to chill and do it later. Wow. And an air pump. That would be for the assist. Interesting. So I I thought the uh, air pump was included inside the unit, but obviously not. I wonder how good that is compared to what I've got right now. And I wonder if you can make it suck instead of blow. Good for a uh, PNP air pump. If you find electric electricity leak, please cut the power at once. You should use it after it's repaired. Nice. Okay, well, I don't get it. It shows pictures of water and fish. There we go. It's all the stuff that came with it. Okay, so the next day, it's cooled down dramatically. So I've got the garage door open. I can actually see the side of the laser cutter now. And as you can see, it's got a adjustable Z bed height. So I can lift it up and down. 
which is very cool. I did not know that this laser cutter had adjustable Z height. And also we've got uh, USB in and uh, U disk. I assume that's just for a, a USB key if you want to load files off that directly rather than using a computer to control it. And then we've got our main switch for power, our laser switch on and off, turn the light on and off, and then our input for power. There's a fan on the side. Let's have a look at what's inside electronics wise. It's amazingly neat inside. You know, coming from the K40, I really didn't expect to see such a nice job putting them together. I guess my experience on Chinese laser cutters is pretty tainted, but that's pretty cool. Got multiple power supplies, stepper controllers, power routing, a nice fan on the side. I'm very impressed. Let's have a look at the laser. Okay, right at the back of the laser, there was a little screw, Allen key screw, holding the laser door shut. That will not be staying shut. Okay, let's lift it up. And here we have a massively long laser tube. We have a look here, you can see that the actual tube itself is an 80 watt tube. Peak power up to, I think that's 85 watts. That was 12th of the 9th, 2018 for data production. So that's pretty good. It's passed its quality control. I don't really know what the quality control is, but that's okay. And what I really like so far, which is a stark change to what I had in the K40, is the laser mirror heads. So obviously the laser bounces off mirrors. Right. is solid, really nicely attached, much easier to adjust the mirrors on. Of course I'm going to have to do a pass on this and make sure that all the mirrors are aligned. It would have been aligned before it shipped, but you know, it could have shifted quite a lot in transit, even though it was packed quite well. It just needs to shift a tenth of a millimetre and it could degrade the power of the laser or actually make it completely just misfire. So that is the laser tube, that is one big laser tube, it's so big that it's got this box on the side here, hanging over the edge for the rest of the tube to stick out. I am so looking forward to using this. One last thing it's got on the back, just to show you, it would normally freak me out, but if it's wired correctly it's fine. These are power outlets, and there's that ground cable attachment for earth. Which is pretty cool. I don't know what I'm going to attach it to. So the idea is you've got power coming in and then I can power the air compressor and normally like a water pump, although in this case I'll be using the water chiller from these points here. So I don't have to run multiple power cables. I'm probably going to want to put some type of shelf on the bottom under here on these railings and then I can put the air compressor on that assuming it doesn't shake around too much and cause too much no noise otherwise I'll just leave it on the concrete ground and finally here's our water inlet and outlet connectors and the air inlet for the air assist which is used to keep air flowing on where the laser's cutting to reduce debris in the laser path and just clear smoke and kind of as a, a flame suppressant so they all connect there which is quite nice so that's it that's the full unboxing of the laser cutter. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to all my patrons. I really value all of your support. And until next time, catch you later.